Casting Deaden Platsil Gel 25 Prosthetics into a 1630 Resin Mold. Now in today's tutorial we're going to follow up on the previous two videos where we showed how to create a corrected core and then we showed how to make a negative prosthetic mold. And in this video we're going to show how to cast deadened Platsil Gel 25 to create an encapsulated silicone prosthetic. Now in order to do this properly, you will need to properly release your resin mold. And we're actually going to release our mold in two steps. First of all, we'll be applying a homemade Vaseline release. And to do that, we'll be mixing about one part Vaseline to about four to five parts naphtha or lighter fluid. You can also use Zippo lighter fluid if you don't have access to naphtha. Now to make this release, you just combine the Vaseline in a polypropylene mixing cup like we're doing here with uh, some naphtha and stir that very slowly. It'll take it a little while to go into solution, but stir that slowly so it doesn't splash out of your mixing cup. And eventually that'll turn into a basically a Vaseline solution. So you could easily just rub Vaseline all over both halves of the mold, but it's real easy to over apply the release when you do that method. So take your time, stir this up, make a nice solution, and then you can always cap that off and use uh, any excess for application to other molds later on. Now we're ready to apply the release to both halves of the mold, both the positive and the negative. And you want to make sure you take care to brush that with a soft brush into all the detail and all the exposed surfaces of the mold. When you're casting a deadened gel 25 prosthetic or deadened gel 10 for that matter, you have to take care to properly release your molds. Otherwise, the uh, deadened gel will really want to grab onto the mold and stay put. Now in the negative mold, since that has kind of a bowl shape, we want to take care to brush that in and not allow the release to pool up, dump out any excess if necessary, and then let that mold dry for about an hour. And now we're ready to move on with the next release step, and that's just a, a spray of epoxy par film release. And we're going to spray that again into both halves of the mold. And once we've got uh, the spray in place, we're ready to move on to our encapsulator. And I always like to let the mold sit for a good uh, 30 minutes to an hour uh, after I've released it to make sure that the release is off-gassed and uh, doesn't interfere with the cap plastic. Now for our encapsulator, we'll be using Super Baldi's cap plastic. And Super Baldi's, as opposed to the regular Baldi's formula, is alcohol soluble. And uh, it must be broken down with 99% alcohol. You can't use 91 or 70%. You must mix it about, for airbrushing, about one part Super Baldi's to about four to five parts 99% alcohol. And you can also use uh, regular Baldi's for this process. Just remember that regular Baldi's breaks down with acetone versus 99% uh, alcohol. Now, just like when we were mixing up our own release agent, make sure that you take time to slowly stir in the Super Baldi's. If you mix this too vigorously at first, it'll splash out and uh, possibly throw off your ratio or just waste material. So take time to stir that up slowly and let that Super Baldi's go into solution. And once you've got that mixed up, you'll find that that, uh, that proportion of about uh, four parts alcohol to one part Super Baldi's is a good consistency for an external mix airbrush. Now it should go without saying, but uh, make sure anytime you're spraying material like this, especially something with 99% uh, alcohol or naphtha or any other type of petroleum solvent, make sure that you work in a well-ventilated area. Uh, any kind of airbrushing, even spraying water-based materials, you always want to work in a very well-ventilated area. You do not want your lungs to be full of cat plastic. So. Now that I've said that, moving right along, this is the world's cheapest, crappiest airbrush. I get these little guys from Harbor Freight, and they're great for spraying in uh, cap plastic. You adjust that little knob on the top of the, uh, of the little bottle of cap plastic to adjust the spray, and then you're ready to spray it into your negative mold. Now you just need to apply your cap plastic to the negative mold. And we're going to actually spray in about four to five layers. But uh, this is actually just one layer that we're doing right here. So what you're seeing here, you're actually going to do four to five times. And you can always check your thickness later on to make sure that it's adequate. 
but it will take about four to five layers sprayed in like that. And then once you've sprayed in your cap plastic, you want to allow that to dry at least an hour before you cast your prosthetic. You don't want any of the alcohol that's flashing off from that cap plastic to interfere with the curing of your gel 25. And speaking of gel 25, once you've applied your cap plastic and let that dry, you're now ready to measure out your gel 25 and deadener LV and pre-pigment all of the components. Typically for a project like this, you'll be running several prosthetics. So it's a good idea to go ahead and measure out more than you're going to need and color it all at the same time so that all of the batches, all of the prosthetics wind up being the same color. Now to do that, what we're going to do is we've uh, marked several mixing cups, A, B, and DLV for deadener LV. And I'm just going to pour out about 150 grams of A, 150 grams of B, and about 300 grams of Deadener LV. And of course, the LV on Deadener LV stands for low viscosity. This system for uh, a lot of uh, prosthetics like this does not have to be vacuum degassed. It's a very easy system to use. Now, to color our Gel 25, we're going to use a combination of silicone pigment and flocking. And the reason for that is silicone pigment by itself gets a very flat uniform color that's translucent, but it's a very flat uniform, too flat and too uniform. So what the flocking does is give it a little bit more character so that even in close-up photography, you can see dots of different colors. So uh, the nice thing about flocking is also since it is a fiber that doesn't dissolve, it doesn't affect the translucency of the silicone. So we're going to add a little bit of the flesh tone flocking and a little bit of the tan flocking, red, yellow, and even a tiny little bit of blue. And we're gonna add the same amount to all the different components, roughly. I mean, you, you wanna be as close as you can get it. And the whole point of this exercise is by getting the A, B, and the Deadener LV pigmented roughly the same color, then when we mix those all together, we don't have to worry about any major color change. And that way we can make sure that uh, uh, our prosthetic doesn't get too translucent or too opaque when we put all the components together. Now you'll notice we started with white silicone pigment and the reason we did that versus a flesh tone is when I'm working with uh, flesh tones, if I'm matching flesh tones that are fairly uh, fair, I like to start with white as a base and then add uh, flocking to that to gradually darken it. If I start with our standard flesh tone, sometimes that's a little too dark for some uh, some skin tones that I'm trying to match. So uh, when in doubt, if you're doing very fair skin, uh, people start with a little bit of white silicone pigment and then work up from that point. Just remember that anytime you're working with a translucent material, you can always make it darker, but you can't make it lighter. So it's always a good idea to err on the side of slightly more fair than it really needs to be. Now, once we've mixed the flocking and silicone pigment into all of our components, we can adjust that if we need to. We can add a little bit more flocking or a little bit more pigment as needed. And uh, we're ready to go, we're ready to measure out our silicone to make our prosthetic. Now for this particular uh, prosthetic, we're going to deaden this quite a bit. We're going to use a ratio of 1A to 1B to two parts deadener LV. So for this particular batch, I mixed up 50 grams of part A, 50 grams of part B, and 100 grams of deadener LV. Now with the deadener LV added, you're going to have a working time of about seven minutes and a demold time of right around one hour. So remember that you want to uh, work precise and fast. Now, if you do need more working time, there's uh, times where you might be pouring up a really large prosthetic and you need additional working time, you can always add the 7173R. That is the retarder component, and that can be used to slow this down either, either double or triple the working time of the regular Gel 25. So remember when we've mixed up gel 25, 1A to 1B to two parts deadener LV, that we're going to have a mixing time or pour time of about seven minutes and then a demold time of about an hour. And all of this information on deadener LV and gel 25, we just posted a tutorial uh, last month on this, and I'll put a link to that in the video description. So along with all the product uh, links and everything else, be sure to check that out because that's a, a good breakdown of the different softnesses that can be achieved with varying amounts of deadener LV mixed with gel 25. So I wanna take time to stir that up really well 
and uh, scrape the sides and the bottom of the container. And once I've mixed that up, I'm ready to pour that into my negative mold. And again, since that negative mold is uh, basically the shape of a bowl, it's very easy to just pour that in. And the way this was mold was designed is just to pour that into the uh, negative mold and then take that positive core and press that in and displace any excess material into that overflow area and into those little side, those corner areas where that extra silicone can escape out of the mold. Now in order to get the mold sealed tight and get a really precise uh, edge on our prosthetic, we want to put some weights on the uh, core. And this is one of the reasons we did that little trick I mentioned in the previous video from the Neil Gordon workshop where we create that uh, core and the negative mold so it sticks up about 3 8 inch proud from the surrounding mold. And that allows us to be able to put a lot of pressure just on the core. Now again, our demold time is right around an hour for a piece like this. You, you can always check that overflow and make sure everything is cured properly. And uh, once it's cured, you're ready to dust that with some baby powder because any of that exposed deadened gel 25 will feel tacky to the touch. And that's okay. That's different from it feeling sticky from being uncured or oily because it uh, didn't cure properly or having cure inhibition. The uh, surface tack to that is necessary for it to function as a prosthetic in conjunction with the super baldies. So uh, powder it and that will remove that surface tack uh, that you find with the, the really soft silicone gels like that. And then we're going to carefully peel back that excess and then gently pry this out of the mold. And you want to be very careful here to take care not to uh, tear your prosthetic if you have really thin edges. And there we have our finished prosthetic. And we didn't go into this in the previous video on making the uh, positive core. But once you've got that positive core mold, one of the other functions of that is you can pour up additional cores to store prosthetics. And you can either use uh, low density uh, rigid foam or flexible foam and then just pin those prosthetics into place. And now we're going to trim off any of that excess flange. We want to uh, take care not to uh, remove the entire flange. We want to make sure that we keep a lot of that overflow intact because a gel 25 prosthetic like this with a lot of deadener is uh, going to be very soft and we want to make sure it doesn't fold up on itself. So having that, uh, that flange or that uh, overflow still attached will help us maneuver that into place later on on our subject. And there you have it. That's how you cast up an encapsulated silicone prosthetic. This uh, Platzil Gel 25 prosthetic can now be pre-painted with some alcohol colors. And it'll be ready to apply to our subject. So stay tuned for the follow-up video where we'll be sticking this on our lovely subject. And blending it in and applying some blood to it. And of course, those of you who are new to our products and information, remember that all of our products and our videos are available on our website at brickintheyard.com. And if you are interested in following along with us as we uh, film some of these things and take pictures around our shop and show some of the progress of uh, uh, videos like this, you can always check us out on Instagram at instagram.com slash And again, thanks for watching and stay tuned for part four.